right. figured I better get this shot. We added the vent shades. We added quarter fender toppers. And added some new dirty mud flaps. But another power only load. This is crane parts. This is going out to a windmill farm. They are putting some windmills up here. One from Texas to West Virginia. I didn't have to secure it. It was pre-secured. Literally, you hook it up and roll to West Virginia from Texas. So, let me tell you all about it. Just like that, we are 50 miles away. Loaded again. Pre-strapped, pre-tarped. <laughs> Even hadn't have to do the tarp. So, we are heading to Wyoming with this 25,000 pounds. Some kind of crane motor head or something. So, hasta. Beautiful Wyoming. And there is our next load. A full-length step deck load of sailboat fuel. Tell you all about it coming up on Rob McKev. What is going on you guys? To the new subscribers, welcome in. Usual suspects, welcome back. Boy, there are going to be a lot of nuggets, I think, in this video. Some that people probably won't like or agree with, and some that may actually learn you something. So try and get into it and uh, talk about everything. As we left off last time, I was on that way back from New York down to Texas with that empty hopper trailer. And I was like, boy, five days, 2,700 up there, 2,700 back, delivered at the auction site. It was, I mean, just literally let it hook up, roll away, drop in, sign your paperwork, see you later. Like, this is going to be easy. Now, obviously, I knew it wasn't going to be that easy, but you know what? It is what it is. So I wanted to go out and get some running in and get some information to give you. So it is now Friday, and as you saw from the intro, we've done a couple loads. And again, I thought about putting the intro, and I'll explain some of the stuff in the intro. But when I delivered that auction trailer, the thing that I am discovering, and I'm still learning how all this works with the power only, is that you don't have as much time on loads as you may have, you know, loaded on Monday, they take time, you got to get there, a little, you know, like a Monday to Thursday is now Monday to Wednesday, and they want it there Wednesday morning. So when I delivered that load down in Texas with that hopper trailer, I was actually kind of low on hours. And so I found one that had some, some crane pieces, but if I had done that, I would have ended up stuck in Laredo, taking a 34, because I would have had hours to get anywhere. And then I found out, and again, you argue with me in the comments or tell me what they were wrong about, but I found a trailer that was going from about 50 miles away, going up to Colorado, and it was an empty tanker trailer. So I emailed the broker, and oh, you know, I'm good to go, empty, clean, it's going out of, uh, just going out there and just pick it and drop it. I was like, sweet. But then I started having this thought, because I do not have my tanker endorsement. It is what it is, I never thought I would haul a tanker. And when you Google, can you haul an empty tanker, what they come up with, and the answer that they come up with, is empty totes. You can haul all the empty totes you want. Portable trailers that hold liquid. You can haul those all you want, as long as they're empty. But I was talking to a buddy of mine, and because I have people that look out for me, he goes, hold on. And he called me back, and he called me back, and he was like, all right, so I just spoke to Wyoming. The DOT, because he was, I just passed the scale house. And according to them, if it is a spec trailer, it is a spec to be a tanker trailer, you cannot haul it without a tanker endorsement, even if it's empty, even if it's not never been used, even if it's brand new. So we called California because nobody else would answer their phone, and they said the exact same thing, that, you know, empty totes, empty portable, that does, that's different. But if it is spec as a tanker trailer, you must have a tanker endorsement to haul it, even if it's empty. So I said, you know what? Two hours from home, I'll run home and take a 34. It's Monday, and I'm broke. So, you know, we'll go over there, I'll run home, take off Tuesday, leave back out Wednesday. And the term that I'm gonna use a lot, as you saw in the title, is aggressive patience. So, part of it is also very hard to leave when you're home. But I wanted to go to the Stars game, and so I got my 34 back Wednesday. I got up Wednesday, didn't find anything. Went to the Stars game that night, got home super late. Got up Thursday, still didn't find anything. Now again, if I'm home, there are loads that I could have taken. I mean, be very, if I've been out on the road or I've been home, there are loads I've taken. I inquired about some, but I wanted it to be a good load. And so I saw, got the load that you saw in that first clip, which was crane parts. It was the cranes they used to assemble the windmills. And so they had finished a windmill project in Texas and they were doing one in West Virginia. 
So I said, hey, I can do that, not a problem. It's already strapped, it's already secured. Pick it up, take it out there and drop it off. So booked it, went over the weekend, got up to uh, West Virginia. Delivered that Monday morning again. Pull in a little back road driving. I don't know if I have any video of that, but you know, just a little bit back road driving through the hills of West Virginia just for fun. Again, the load was supposed to weigh forty thousand pounds. It weighed eighteen thousand pounds, but it got there, got it dropped off, delivered the load, no problems. So, deep, uh, so I used my PC and got up to the truck stop. Got about you know, got out of the woods of West Virginia, and with power only, I pull it up and there's nineteen hundred loads within three hundred miles. And like four of them are real loads. There are a lot of round trippers and a ton of loadouts. So I'm not really finding anything. So I'll go eat some lunch, come back, swipe the refresh button, thinking, well, we'll find something for Tuesday because this is Monday. And a load pops up. And it's one of the, the loads that you saw with some massive crankcase going to Wyoming. And the brokers don't always tell you all of the details. And so I'm like, this is 40 miles away. It's got a ridiculously good rate. It's going to Wyoming, which is going to absolutely suck to get out of. But it's paying such a good rate. It's the closest one. I found a lot that were in Ohio that were 200 miles away. This is 40 miles away. So I roll up, I get to the customer, and there's no trailer. You just got jammed. Like, where's the trailer? Oh, no. Jim Bob, whoever, had to go get it loaded. It, it'll be here in a minute. And sure enough, within five minutes, the trailer rolls in. And it's strapped down, it's secured, it's tarped, it's ready to go. I'm like, all right, we can make this work. And he goes, all right, so when are you going to be back? Be back what? This is a pick and drop. I'm not coming back. Like, what do you mean you're not bringing my trailer back? I'm like, nobody told me I'm coming back to Pennsylvania. And he goes, yeah, no, you got to bring the trailer back. Like, we don't want our trailer doesn't do any good in West Virginia. You know, you guys screwed up because, you know, we always work for the broker. And you were supposed to have a truck and trailer here this morning to go load this. That fell through, so I used my trailer and went and got it loaded for you. So you're going to get a crane out here and get it on another trailer, or you're going to figure out how my trailer's coming back. I know none of this information. And so I'm like, I call the broker, like, hey, y'all deal with this. This is not my problem. So he's like, all right, cool, all right, blah, 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 blah. He comes back and goes, just tell him. You know, I was like, he goes, just tell him. He's like, no, you can just tell him. He goes, all right, hold on, give me his number. He comes back five minutes later. All right, squared away. He goes, we'll figure out a way to load our trailer. We'll, trailer. we'll get it back to Pennsylvania. You're good to go. Load and roll. So that's what I did. I loaded and rolled. I went through Pennsylvania, Iowa. I mean, I don't know, 13, 1400 miles on 80. And this place was right off 80. It's one of it's, uh They dig 1800 feet in the ground. They pull out baking soda. And so the whole way over there, and as you saw, again, I gave it away a little bit, but I wanted to show you the videos. He keeps harassing me. He's p pinging me. Hey, you know. You, you, you can use this trailer as a loadout trailer to get back. And I'm like, look, I don't have the hours. I have the hours to get unloaded in the middle of nowhere, Wyoming, go find a load. I have to hope that this thing's got enough securement gear on it and their tarps. And, I, you know, just, I was like, I don't, and then I got to get to Pennsylvania. I got places to be. I'm low on hours. I don't have the time to do that. So they call me the next day. He's like, hey, so will you bring it back to us? Come on, bring it back. We'll pay you to bring it back. All right, cool. Will you pay me? A dollar a mile. No, that's not going to work. So, oh, come on, man. We'll, we'll owe you. You know, we'll owe you. And if you've ever seen my older videos, you know my feeling on IOUs is very simple. What is this? What is this? Where's all the money? That's as good as money, sir. Those are IOUs. I don't do IOUs. He's like, all right, come on, man. You know, I'm like, look, you know, th there's a book that you guys recommended that was you never meet in the middle. And so I said, look, I'll do it. Here's my rate. Oh, I can't do that. that no, no, that's, that's two dollars. You want two dollars a mile? Yeah, two dollars a mile. But the trailer's empty. I'm like, hey, piss poor planning on your part does not constitute an emergency on mine. Now, passively, you know, I'm being aggressive. I'm being aggressive on the rate, and I'm being patient. You know, I'm just, I'm waiting him out because I know his options. His options are going to find somebody to do a loadout trailer on a trailer that's in the middle of nowhere, Wyoming. And he thinks he has me because I can't get a reload. And I had actually already found a reload because I wasn't that far from Salt Lake City and I really wasn't even that far from Denver, especially with your bobtail and all that. So we played that game and then the morning that I'm going to drop off, I'm an hour away and he calls me. He's like, man, we really can't leave that trailer. So what are you gonna do? I said, oh, there's a Loves, five miles away. And he goes, all right. So we negotiated and we settled on $1.95 a mile. He did not give me my $2 a mile. And I gave a little bit, probably gave up money, you know. And so, as you saw, I have an empty trailer, step deck trailer, on its way back to Pennsylvania. And we're getting nine and a half miles per gallon pulling it back. But, you know, it just, 
you have to be aggressive. You have to, if you see a load out here and you're doing trying to do power only and you wait and you want, oh, what's the reload area and do this and what's the fuel economy, that load's going to be gone. You have to be aggressive, like you got to be on the phone. You got to be, hey, I want this load. Hey, what's the deal with this load? If you're if you're just you know, willy nilly about it, you will lose the load. But you have to have patience because, again, as trucks fall through with power only, from what I have seen, stuff is constantly popping up where stuff like this happens. Hey, this guy fell through. This something didn't happen. The weather, anything that can happen in trucking, happens to those loads. So you have to be refreshing the load board. But I have been patiently aggressive. And I did a great load out of Texas, great load out of Pennsylvania. I'm getting a pretty decent load to haul out a completely empty trailer back to Pennsylvania that I will drop off on Sunday, and then I'll get a reload Monday, and we'll go home. So power only, man, that load board is, is a different animal. You really have to have filters and comb through and to figure out the loads. You have to be on carrier and broker load boards. I'm on truck stop and DAT. I'm, you gotta look a lot of places, but the loads have been out there I'm really, really looking forward to getting to my one-year mark because when I get to the one-year mark, some of the, you know, the JB hunts that I can't haul and some of these other places that want a year of your own authority, those are going to open up. So I don't know if it's going to be flatbed or we're going to stick with power only. Like I said, we're still, we got a lot of personal stuff going on. Uh, some really good stuff's happened to us there. So we're trying to figure all of these things out. So power only right now is fitting the bill. So I wanted to get out here and get the rolling, get the loads doing so I can give you some information. So hopefully all that gibberish made sense. We'll talk to you soon. God bless. Let's get rolling.